next speaker, I'd like to introduce an individual that was born and raised in Germany, where he completed his degree in banking and finance. Upon his move to London, furthered his education by completing not one, but two additional degrees, which I will let him elaborate on. So, quite a versatile and extensive background, where he also took up active roles at his universities, such as student ambassador. Thakshin went on to pursue a career in cybersecurity and emphasizes the growth mindset, which has aided his growth and learning massively. I'm sure we can see from his vast educational accomplishments that he will not accept any limitations. May I please call upon Thakshin to tell us further about his experiences and rather impressive journey. Thank you, Vidya. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Takshan, Takshan Sanmugalingam. Um, yeah, as Vidya said, born and raised in Germany, so maybe you can hear my accents there. <laughs> but yeah, my education has been a bit different, basically. So um, in Germany, A-levels, you have to choose five subjects. So I went with three subjects I wanted to choose, which were economics, maths, and English. And obviously with Tamil parents, I also chose um, chemistry and biology, just in case I would go basically the yeah, medicine road. But yeah, after my A-levels, I decided to go into finance. In Germany, we've got normal universities, which are yeah, basic free universities, and we've got private universities as well. And in Germany, you've got, I guess translated, it would be dual studies. So it's basically work and studies similar to apprenticeships. However, it's basically a university degree, and the organization you apply for, they would then pay the university, the fees, etc and pay you for the work as well. So I applied for University Bank in Germany, got accepted, so it was a banking and, um, banking and finance degree for three years. And at the same time, I would work 40 hours a week for that bank for three years, rotating through all the different departments of a bank. So it would be basically two, three months of investment banking, two, three months of corporate banking, private banking, HR, etc. basically, you get it. And um, so that was a three years course and you were basically taking exams on work days and studying in your free times. They give you study leaves, etc. as well. So after doing that course, I decided I wanted to, yeah, basically do another degree, another bachelor's degree, however, a normal degree where I can kind of enjoy my university life as well without just working all the time as well. So just spoke to my mentor at the bank he just, and he told me I should maybe go into business, do a business degree. So I spoke to my cousins which were living here in London and yeah, moved to London, did my bachelor's degree then in international business management at the University of West London and did my master's degree then in economics and politics at King's College London. And during the four years of four and a half years, basically, I made sure that I really grow my network because obviously new from Germany, I didn't know that many people here in London. And I made sure that I became a student ambassador, course representative, etc., just to be involved in every networking event the university was organizing so that I could actually meet new people from different works of life and build that relationship with them because you never know when you would actually need those people from your network, especially like after university, getting jobs, etc. And I also made sure as my, yeah, as the other speakers were saying as well, that I was involved in many societies. I, I joined the Boxing Society, Tamil Society, uh, Trading Society, etc. And I also made sure that I had an internship lined up for every summer holiday basically. So I did like summer internships for hedge funds, um, private equity firms, etc. And to be honest with you, most of the internships I got were using my network, speaking to my cousins, using their network they had to get those internships basically. Because I know it's super competitive as well. So make sure you build that network and yeah, use that network as well. So after finishing my degree, I wasn't really sure what to do, so obviously I had that banking, finance, background and um, work experience. And I spoke to a couple of people I used to work before during my internships, etc. And interestingly, two of them were actually working in cybersecurity. And I never 
really focused on cybersecurity didn't study anything relating to cybersecurity either. So I asked them, like, because they had very similar backgrounds to myself as well. And they told me that they changed basically because they understood how important cybersecurity was getting for a lot of organizations. And they used to sell investment solutions for ultra high net worth individuals and high organizations, fund of hedge funds, etc. Now they changed to sell cybersecurity solutions or provide cybersecurity advisory to um, organizations all around the world. So it's very similar to consulting. They gave me basically the same speech you just got from Shanmuam as well, just about consulting and how important it is to yeah, be there for clients, customers, be a problem solver there, analyze their current situation to offer right solution. So in terms of cybersecurity solutions, cybersecurity solutions um, basically give companies, organizations the opportunity to set everything up correctly that no one can actually get into the company in terms of hackers, etc. And there are like different ways attackers can actually get like sensitive data from um, organizations. And they could use like emails, they can use applications, a lot of banks use banking application, right? And those bank applications have to be programmed by engineers. And there might be some back doors in the codes they use to actually create or develop that application. So we have to make sure that those applications are secure. There is endpoint security, password security, like there are different types of cybersecurity basically. So I really found that quite interesting and I had like, yeah, had an offer from PwC in consulting and an offer from a cybersecurity company which I got using my network basically, using my colleagues experience and uh, relationship. So I got that offer and took that risk basically that time and went for that role and yeah, it, Basically, I still obviously had to go through the interview process and they asked me as well, like, why cybersecurity? Why should we take you? You have no experience in cybersecurity. And I kind of, yeah, explained how my past experience, like, or degrees in banking, finance, etc., can help me to understand organizations' needs, their priorities, how important stakeholder relationships are, etc. And that's basically how I kind of got the job in the end as well. And as a now enterprise account executive, um, my tasks are basically working very close with the marketing department, legal department, sales department, etc. And it's more about relationship building and advising customers, existing customers, existing clients, um, potential new clients as well. So I travel a lot. Um, as Sean Moore was saying as well, you are basically a consultant problem solver for organization, but specifically for cybersecurity. And it involves like, it's not a nine to five job, obviously, like it's, um, at the moment I'm looking after Europe and Asia, so all my clients are in Europe and Asia, everywhere. And um, so I start mornings at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., finish at sometimes 10, 11 a.m. It depends on the deals you are working on, the opportunities you have and the projects you are assisting, etc. But in general, it's, it's a really interesting job. Like every, every day is super different, right? Like you speak with clients, you negotiate contracts. Obviously, cybersecurity is a huge thing, so there are a lot of legal involved. So you go to data progressing agreements, you go to non-disclosure agreements, you've got um, service level agreements, etc. So it's a lot of law, a lot of documents you have to go through before you are actually able to speak to customers, clients, etc. But it's super interesting to understand what their needs are, what their fears are as well, like what type of attacks they are facing on a daily basis. And attacks really change, right? It's not like they don't change daily, they change every second, every minute, to be honest. And that's very interesting as well because um, I was worried that because I didn't have any cybersecurity experience I would struggle to ad give them advisory etc but when I started I had the three to six months of training like I had full-on training I was learning every day so it's a learning is a never-ending story right and you have to have that growth mindset like don't think just because you studied I don't know, accounting, for example, that you have to be an accountant for the rest of your life or anything. Like, you, there's a lot of opportunity you can go for with that, with what you've studied. 
And in my case, I'm still studying, I'm still learning every day regarding cybersecurity. There are like mandatory courses we have to attend at the company as well to make sure that we are up to date. And yeah, that's basically in terms of cybersecurity, what I do on a daily basis, advise clients, customers, meet them, um, work with marketing. So I'm also in charge of the go-to-market strategy. So we see, because I'm working for a startup now, so we haven't have any um, customers in Asia. So this is basically learning by doing. I see what strategy we should implement to increase the market share in Asia. And yeah, it's like, as I said, every day something new. And what it's, um, sorry, just lost my thoughts. <laughs> um, I would also say like, in case you've got like the opportunity to have second or third languages at school, go for it. Like, do it, like languages will help you a lot as well in the future. So because I speak um, German and French, obviously I'm looking after German customers, French customers, Asia, they just asked me because I speak Tamil, they were like, okay, would you mind taking over Asia? Because it was um, looked after by my colleagues from the US and because of the time difference, it would just make sense to have someone from London working with Asian countries, Asian customers. So yeah, took that opportunity. So. Yeah, I think overall, like, don't have that mindset that whatever you choose now, that's what you're going to do for the rest of your life. It's not like that. And make sure you build your network, like, that's super important as well. Obviously, good grades, good university, etc. is super important, but also people you know who can actually give you the right advice, maybe even give you job opportunities as well. And yeah, I think that's all from me. If you've got any questions, I'll be at booth six i think just over there so let me know it's a pleasure to meet you all and looking forward to speaking to you all thank you